Ahimsa. The Unlawful Activities Prevention Act has been amended on six occasions, 1969, 1972, 1986, 2004, 2008, and 2013. Substantial amendments were made in 2008 and 2013. It was my duty to move the amendments in 2008. Why I recall this is, when it comes to fighting terrorism, Congress governments and the UPA government made the act and amended the act from time to time. No one can point a finger at the Congress. No one can point a finger at the UPA and say, you were soft on terrorism. Yes. We were strong on terrorism. We were hard on terrorists. We brought the laws to fight terrorism. Look at sections 43A and 43F, which I piloted in 2008, which is the bulwark against terrorism. Now, the Act deals with two different kinds of activities, and I find, with meaning no disrespect to anyone, the tendency is to mix one for the other. The Act deals with unlawful activities, then it deals with terrorist acts. They're not the same. They are defined separately. Unlawful activities are defined in section 2O, and terrorist acts are defined in section 15. Normally, when people speak, they don't draw the distinction between one and the other, but there is a distinction in law. Why I say this is, even before this amendment, Individuals are covered under this act. An individual who is a member of an unlawful association is punishable under this act. An individual who, commis, who commits a terrorist act is punishable under this act. Kindly read the definitions. Kindly read the provisions relating to offenses and penalties. Individuals are already covered under this act. There is no distinction really between punishing an unlawful association and punishing an individual member of an unlawful association. There's again no distinction between a terrorist act committed by a terrorist organization and a terrorist act committed by an individual. Both are covered. If they are covered, I ask myself, why do you bring this amendment act? My colleague Mr. Sibyl asked this question yesterday. And I want to ask it more pointedly, what is the purpose of this act? Now, if you look at the statement of objects and reasons, unfortunately, it gives the impression that the purpose of this act is really to empower the NIA. The real mischief of the act is buried in paragraph 3, subparagraph 2 of the statement of objects and reasons. In passing, you mention to empower the central government to add or remove the name of an individual as a terrorist. That's mentioned in passing, but that's the mischief in this act, which is why we stoutly oppose this amendment. We are not opposing UAPA. We are not opposing your fight against terrorism. We are not opposing empowering the NIA. We are not opposing anything else. We are opposing the mischievous amendment, which has empowered the central government to name an individual. Now, I'll tell you the consequences of that. You are amending sections 35, effectively subsections 1, 2, and 3. You're amending section 36, effectively subsection 1, 5, and 6. The real mischief is in section 35, subsection 2. And I want to read that. Section 35, subsection 2, as amended reads, the central government shall exercise its power under clause A of subsection 1 
in respect of an organization or an individual only if it believes such organization or individual is involved in terrorism. Now, please, forget your party affiliations. Reflect soberly. What does it mean? If the central government believes that an individual is involved in terrorism, the individual will be named. There's no FIR. There's no charge sheet. There are no charges framed. There is no trial in a court. There is no conviction. If the central government believes that an individual is involved in terrorism, he can be named. Now you may ask me, did the same power apply to a terrorist organization? Of course it did. But if you name a terrorist organization, that's one thing. If you name an individual, it's another thing. The two can't be compared. You name a terrorist organization. We have named the number of terrorist organizations. Just look at the schedule. Babar Khalsa, Khalistan Commando Force, Students, Islamic Movement of India, Maoist Communist Center. You name an organization as a terrorist organization. It doesn't affect any individual or his family. But if you name an individual, and then what is the basis in which you will name an individual? Only because you believe he's involved in terrorism. Let me caution you, government. This will be struck down, period. Instead of listening to us here and making the necessary correction, you're forcing us to go about a kilometer away to another building <laughs> and present to another set of eminent gentlemen to strike it down. How does it raise the esteem of parliament? We are doing something which is hopelessly unconstitutional. You know that, I know that, it's unconstitutional. We don't have the courage to admit our error and say this is unconstitutional. Let us not go forward. At least stop here. Let us refer it to a select committee. Let us take opinion of legal experts. Let us call Fali Nariman. Let us call. Let us call Fali Nariman. Let us call Soli Sarabji. Let us call the Attorney General. Let us ask them: Is this provision constitutional? If they say it's constitutional, we come back and pass it. But if they say it's unconstitutional, at least we will not be accused of committing a monumental error. If you pass it today, it won't stop here. It won't stop here. We'll just have to go another kilometer, that's all. Sir, the danger is, once an individual can be named, look at the consequence of Chapter 7. Arrest, criminal procedure at court is modified, there's a presumption of guilt, the burden of proof shifts, there's no anticipatory bail. These are serious consequences upon an individual. Now, you may think that courts will uphold your action. I'm not going into history. I know some judges are benign and give the government a lot of what we call play in the joints. That is, we give the benefit of doubt to government. Maybe government has a reason to do this. But let me tell you, however benign judges may be, when it comes to individual liberty, there is an institutional conscience which will prevail upon the judge. What happened during the emergency? Eminent legal experts in the government then advised the government that you could suspend fundamental rights and no individual had a right to go to court and ask for his liberty to be protected. That's what they were advised. And we had a constitution bent judgment which said during emergency nobody has individual rights. Remember, the attorney general was asked by the judge, if a policeman comes and shoots you, you have no right to come to court and say my life and liberty is at stake. The attorney general then answered, no, my lords, you have no right. It shocked the conscience of India. But remember, 
despite the Supreme Court taking such a view, individual judges and high courts upheld fundamental rights. The first was Justice J.S. Verma in Madhya Pradesh. Yes. It was followed by individual judges in the high courts. Despite the Supreme Court, they said, individual liberty we will uphold. When you pass a section like this, it is not the freedom of an organization we are talking about. It is the liberty of an individual. On the liberty of an individual, let me tell you, every judge in this country, the institutional conscience will prevail and this will be struck down on the ground. This violates individuals' liberty. So, I have the two minutes of my time. My worry is, who are you going to name first? I don't know who you will name. You perhaps name P. Chidambaram. Name him. <laughs> who are you going to name? Don't compare Afi Saeed with Gautam Navlaka. <laughs> my worry is, my worry is, sir, there is a very close parallel between sedition and unlawful activity. But there's no time to go into that. Sedition and unlawful activity are more or less similar, which is one of the reasons why we say now that unlawful activity is defined, the sedition law is obsolete, but that's on a different day, we'll argue that. Now today, in Bhima Koragon in Maharashtra, a professor, Shoma Sen, activist, Rona Wilson, Vernon Gonzalez, poet and writer, Varavara Rao, two lawyers, Surendra Gadling, Arun Ferreira, Gautam Navlaka, Anand Tel Tunde. All but two are arrested and in prison. I think two are under some restriction. They're all accused. They're all activists. I believe, I may be wrong, I believe that none of them advocates violence. What they are advocating is compassion. What they are advocating is lean towards the poor. What they are advocating is uphold the rights of Dalits. What they are advocating is that we must have a peaceful resistance to oppression. But the police thinks they are advocating violence and files a case against them. Let the case take its course. Are you going to name them? In fact, the whole nation will watch who will be the first name that you will add in the amended schedule. Who will be the first name? Every one of you in the treasury benches will have to sleep that night after you see the first name. Who are you going to name? Tell us who you have in mind to name in the fourth schedule. Just because the government believes he's involved in... Please call. Two minutes more. Now, we are giving another last point. We are giving another turn. Last, another point. Turn. last point. Everyone has to sleep that night when you read the first name. If the first name turns out to be a name which is because of cases and convictions is a known terrorist, that's a different matter. But if you name somebody only because you believe, you believe he is involved in terrorism, that day none of us can sleep in peace. Finally, sir, now that we are talking about anti-terrorism, in 2008 when I took over as Home Minister, I said, anti-terrorism will stand on a tripod, three legs. One is the NIA, one is NatGrid, and one is NCTC. NCTC. But we only have one leg today. What is the government's answer about NatGrid and NCTC? Why are the two in limbo? Why, what have you done about NatGrid? What have you done about NCTC? If you really believe, if you really want to show to the world that you are fighting terrorism, bring the NatGrid into existence and bring the NCTC into existence. Sir? I oppose this bill because it takes power to the government to name an individual as a terrorist. I oppose it on that. Thank you, Chidambaram.